Hey guys, a few months ago I did a tutorial on normal landings when the game first came out. Obviously that was geared to new flyers, but this one right here might even be geared to people who have been flying for a while, just not maybe in a specific way, such as the bush trips and flying into these really small airfields. Uh, in that original tutorial it talked about how to fly the traffic pattern and land a general aviation aircraft on a runway that's very long and has a lot of space. If you're finding yourself struggling with landings and you haven't seen that video, I highly recommend you give that a watch. Like I mentioned, that's for normal landings, right? If you're on a grass strip or if you're on a really short runway, you don't really have that luxury of floating down, you know, thousand foot down the runway. So sometimes you might have to be landing on dirt, uh, dirt or grass surfaces. So how exactly do we do that? Well, stick around and we'll talk about short field and soft field landings and takeoffs. And at the very end, we'll even do a practical exercise in a valley where every foot of altitude matters. Okay, welcome to the tutorial. Short field takeoff and landing first, then we'll do a quick soft field introduction, and then we'll do the final go at it in an actual uh, scenario that you'd really want to use it. So for the first trial run, if you want to follow along at this airport, that's fine. If you don't, that's cool too. Uh, the choice is yours, folks. Uh, I'm taking us to my home airport, at least home now, Manhattan Regional. And we're going to set the winds up so that the winds are out of the uh, south southwest. Uh, I really just want calm winds is fine. Going to be using runway 21 for departure in a Cessna 172 Skyhawk. Um, just get my tail numbers in there. Sweet. I always fly with the same tail number. The one and only 358 Tango Whiskey. For the weather, just give yourself some easy weather. You know, cloud, few clouds. Get that wind pretty much along the runway. Uh, that looks good. Four knots, three knots, two knots, whatever. Gust out of the same direction. All right, so the weather looks perfectly fine to me, and then four o'clock's fine with me. I'll dial that back to about 3.30. Sun goes down pretty early out here. And uh, the reason that I want to do this airport is to simulate that short field runway. So we have a long runway, um, but we want to stop before the intersection here, which is uh, fairly reasonable. In real life, it's a little more challenging. In the simulator, it's always going to be a little easier to do things. There you go. We're going to stop before the intersecting runway. Uh, that's going to be our quote-unquote short field. We're in a Cessna 172 Skyhawk. Rotate a couple of V speeds that we're going to talk about. Um, whoa, hello. Before we start flying, doing our short field takeoff and landing, when we're talking about short field landings, they're an exercise in controlling exactly where the aircraft needs to touch down at. So we always, when you're doing short field landings, you always want to pick exactly where you want to touch it down. All right, so I'm going to pick the numbers right here, and you're going to hear me talk about the numbers. All right, so the numbers are this 2-1 right here, all right, runway 2-1. We want to touch down on the numbers. That means our aiming point should be somewhere back here, okay, pretty much right on the displaced threshold. All right, that's going to be our room for flaring, which we shouldn't flare a whole lot because we're coming in with less energy. We're coming in slower. We want to come in... Usually you're going to be coming in 70, 65 knots. On a short field landing, we want that to be 60, uh, about 60 knots over the threshold, maybe even 55 knots. So um, 60 is going to be your safer bet. 55 is going to be a, a little squirrely for a, a low hour pilot, at, le at least in reality. So we want to touch down on those two one. If we touch down any before that or any after that, um, we're kind of failing. So, And the whole point is that we're imagining that we have this really short runway where you see my aircraft is stopped ahead couple speeds that we need to be aware of. VX, that's our rate of best climb. Sorry, best angle of climb. That's 62 knots. That means that when we get off the ground, we're pitching for 62 knots. If, it start, if we start speeding above that, we pitch up to maintain 62. If we start slowing below that, we pitch down to maintain 62. The standard rate of, uh, standard speed for climbing out, climbing out in a 172S is usually going to be somewhere between 74 and 80 knots, depending on uh, how aggressive you want to be. That's our best rate of climb, 74 knots at sea level today so 62 knots is the magic number and then on base we want to be doing 70 knots on final we want to be doing 65 knots so a little slower than standard in the 172s if you're flying a different aircraft you're going to need to recalibrate your speeds for that aircraft that airframe uh, when on doing short field landings we want to be crossing the threshold at about 60 knots so we want to take all that extra energy out of the wings that way when, when the wheels hit the ground if we hit a little firm we're not going to bounce off and gain altitude because we're going so slow that we're going to, uh, you know, stay rested to the ground. So all my lights are set, mixture's full rich, flaps are already set to 10, got to release the brakes. 
Okay, so for soft feet, we're gonna start with a short field takeoff. Go right into the pattern on a short field takeoff. Feet on the brakes. Short field takeoff is quite simple. I set my heading for my current present heading, which looks to be about 215, 220. I'm gonna go full power on the brakes. Let the RPM get to max. So the way my instructor taught me is full power. Count to three. One, two, three. And it's going to accelerate. So get your right foot on that rudder. Maintain the rudder. Engine instruments are both in the green. Airspeed is coming alive slowly. We're going to rotate at the same speed we always do. 55 knots. And then we're going to pitch immediately for 60, whoa, 65, uh, sorry, 62 knots on the airspeed. So we're passing 50 knots. 55. Rotate. 62. And the reason we're doing 62 knots is we are imagining that there is an obstacle that we need to clear. This is going to guarantee us clearance over that obstacle. So we're climbing. See, I got 65 knots. So I got to pitch up for that 62. Still accelerating. There we go. There's 62. Use that trim if you need to. Okay, we've cleared the obstacle. It's an imaginary obstacle. There's not one on this runway. We've cleared the obstacle. Get the nose level with the horizon. Let that airspeed get past 75 knots. 75 knots achieved. Go into 80. Flaps go up. Flaps are up. Airspeed's 80 knots. We're going to climb out at about 80 knots, 74 knots. 75 to 80 knots on the climb. Now it is a standard departure. Now we're just going to climb 1,000 feet above uh, station elevation for us. That's 1,097. So we're going to climb to 2,097, 2,100 feet. And we're going to, that's going to be our traffic pattern altitude. We're passing 600 feet AGL. So we're going to now uh, make our left turn for crosswind. And I'll rejoin you guys. Since this is all standard, I will rejoin you guys on the downwind. All right, welcome back. We're leveling out, getting wings level here on the uh, end of our climb out. A little high because trimming in the sim is a pain in the ass. RPMs are set to 2100, uh, especially this time of year. That's definitely doable. And we're paralleling the runway. That runway is about uh, a little over halfway up the wing strut, three-fourths. It's going to depend on how your camera's set in the sim, but uh, for me, this is fine. Okay, so again... If you're new to the whole concept of what the V speeds are and what the speeds we want are, um, a little refresher. When we enter base, we're going to want to do five knots slower. So usually on base, I like to be 80. Now I'm going to be 75 knots. When we get to final, we're going to, uh, sorry, as we begin to descend past the touchdown point, which is going to be the numbers 2 1. I forgot to mention, so I'm going to pull the power out to about 1600 RPM, flaps to 10. Okay, so we're below 110 knots, can bring that flaps to 10. So I'm immediately going to, usually at this point, I'm at 80 knots, I wanna be at 75 knots. I wanna be slow immediately. So trim it out if you need to, slow it to 75 knots. Now, the whole point of a short field takeoff, or, or sorry, a short field landing, is to put the plane down on a point. Anybody can make a soft, field, a soft landing. My landings in real life are soft all the time. What's hard is putting the aircraft down exactly where you want it. So we're going to aim for the numbers, which means we want the wheels down on the numbers. Below 85 knots, flaps 20. We want the wheels touching down on the numbers. The, and by when I say the numbers, I'm talking about the numbers of the runway. You see 2, 1 there right past the threshold. That's where I want. So as I get on base here, I'm doing 70 knots. All right, And when I make my turn for final... I want to be doing 70, uh, 65 knots. So flaps are currently at 20. Yep, verified flaps 20. Final's clear. All right, we're going to go flaps to... We're going to make it flaps 30. Flaps set 30. Pitch for 65 knots. And around... I'm always... Even in real life, I'll be honest, I round my entry into final all the time. So very great instructor that I fly with says, if you're going to round it, Rounded inside, not outside, which I guess isn't technically rounding it if you're outside. But we're aiming. We want the wheels down on the on the numbers. We're coming in slower, which means that we're going to be going in with a, a higher angle of attack. There's the numbers right there, 2-1. We want to move our aiming point up. So by up, I mean closer to us. The aiming point needs to be in front of the numbers so that we can get that tiny little flare in. We're not going to flare that much. We're really going to just descend right onto it. It's, it's pretty jarring in real life, at least I think so. Uh, the difference between my normal landings and my soft, my short field landings, how much more firm the touchdown feels. So 
I've got flaps to 30. I've got my power out in about 1700 RPMs. And now let's see what our aiming point is. If I zoom in here, the aiming point is the point that's not moving. To me, the aiming point looks to be that last arrow on the center line right before the touchdown, uh, right before the threshold, displaced threshold. So I'm going to slow us down now to 60 knots. I'm going to manipulate power and pitch to do so. Okay, we're at 62 knots, slowing to 60. And we're going to put it down right on those numbers. All right, no other place, guys. We have got to nail it right on the numbers. All right, power to idle. Just floated past it, just floated past it. So, all right, immediately come down on the brakes, maintain center line. All right, so it's easy to get the aircraft stopped in real life or in, in the sim, it's a little easier than in real life. Uh, but as you can see, I touched down a little bit before or a little bit after I wanted to. So, I'm going to put the parking brakes on. All right, once again, we've passed our touchdown point. All right, again, past the numbers. Pull that out, we're below 110 knots, flaps can go to 10. As those flaps go down, as the flaps extend, I'm holding my nose at a relatively neutral level to the horizon. See that airspeed's dropping below 80, keeping it, I want it to continue to drop below 80 to 75, so I'm gonna trim. As I'm holding the nose, there we go, that's 75. I'm gonna trim nose up to where I don't have to do so much work. Getting a little away from the airfield, and that nose is dropping, and getting airspeed, so I'm gonna continue to trim nose up. And now as we make our uh, turn to base, I'm going to drop my flaps to 20 and drop that airspeed to 70 knots. So I'm too fast right now. All right, so I want to get that nose up. There's 70 knots, pitch pitch for airspeed, power for altitude. So I'm doing about 70, 68 knots. 68 knots is our best glide at no flaps. Okay, final's clear. See, I'm doing a little slow. I'm going to add a little power because I definitely underpowered for my approach. There we go. You can see that I've got 70 knots on the airspeed exactly. Finals clear, and it feels like I'm trimmed for good, trimmed for what I need. So there's 65 knots. Drop that nose a little bit. All right, finals clear, and we can in just a moment begin our turn for base. Sorry, final. Flaps go to 30. Begin my turn for final. Watch that airspeed. Okay, I want to be 65 on short final. I want to be 65 on final, slow into 60. My airspeed almost dropped below 60 right there. So you got to be, got to be mindful. You got to watch. All right, I'm gonna increase my power a little bit. Now I'm gonna bring my power back out because I'm getting high. There we go. Watch that airspeed. All right, look at your touchdown point. Look at your airspeed. All right, those are the two things that we're watching. Sixty knots is okay at this point. We're close enough where we want to be. Um, just going to add a little bit of power to slow my sink rate down a little bit. Not a whole lot. You see, we went from white to red, so we're pretty much right where we want to be. Now I'm kind of squarely focused on that touchdown point. I really want to hit the two one on the numbers. All right, so here we go. Keeping my eye on that two one. All right, I'm getting a little too fast. I'm going to reduce the power, keep my nose about the same as it is now. There we go. I'm pulling my power out even more. I'm going to go to go to idle as I cross the displaced threshold, 60 knots over the displaced threshold, and we're going to touch down right on the numbers. So, it is a firm touchdown, I'm telling you, and it's a little that was a little flat, so that's not the most ideal way to do it, but we made it work, and we're on the ground. So that's short field takeoffs and landings. Now for soft field takeoff and landing, we're going to find a grass strip. All right, for our short field, uh, soft field takeoff, we're at Combe Municipal, uh, right there, D03. This is also kind of a short field, and uh, it's a, yeah, it's a short grass runway, a little strip out in the middle of nowhere, South Dakota, I think. And uh, this will be a good demonstration. Look, at that, that's beautiful. It'll be a good demonstration of how to do our short uh, soft field takeoff. So for soft field, uh, I, the takeoff to me is identical. Um, the only thing is we're not really using our brakes, um, but we're going to use flaps ten. And here's the thing: both for takeoff and landing, that's really crucial is protecting the nose gear. 
we're gonna keep that elevator all right when we start you don't want it all the way up because when you go full power trust me I've done it in real life when you go full power the nose will climb on you um, so you're gonna kind of ease up on that and as you get faster and faster the nose is going to start to get off the ground. The aircraft's going to leave the ground prematurely. You're going to rotate way before 55 knots. And if you don't immediately ease your angle of attack and uh, stay in ground effect, the gravity will win out and bring you back down because you won't have enough lift to sustain level flight. So keep the nose safe. Keep the nose gear safe. Keep that nose up as you go. You're not doing a wheelie, right? You're just keeping pressure off the nose gear. That way, if you hit any potholes or anything, the nose gear doesn't fall in and collapse. Uh, things don't get wild. Prop strike happen. And then when you land, it's going to be the opposite. You're going to uh, get in a ground effect, let the wheels touch down, and then you're just going to keep that nose gear off the ground for as long as you can. So follow along. It's going to be pretty easy. So we're going to go full power. All right, I'm bringing my nose back. All right, also putting in that right rudder to maintain a straight flight, straight travel. Okay, we're gonna climb out at 62 knots when we get off the ground, or when we speed it, when we get our acceleration. So, nose gear is coming off the ground. That pressure's releasing. All right, pretty soon the aircraft is gonna get on and get into ground effect. All right, gonna let that airspeed build up. All right, see, I'm still in ground effect. I'm not climbing, I'm not rolling on the ground. Now we're gonna climb out at 62 knots to clear these obstacles. Pitching up for 62, there's 62 knots. All right, no less, no more, 62. Once we clear those obstacles as we have, I'm going to go ahead and level out just a moment to get the airspeed up to 80, 75 knots, 80. All right, flaps up. Now we're gonna climb out. Climb out at the standard. So they're all pretty similar. Once we get the flaps up, we climb out at 75 knots. And now we're just off and going. Look back, the air grass strips right behind me. So that's the soft field takeoff. Let's go ahead and loop back around and practice that soft field landing. Like I mentioned, all right, like I mentioned, we have to be wary of the nose gear. We have to protect it by keeping that nose off the ground as long as we can. There's the grass strip, easily identifiable. So the landing speeds for the grass strip are going to be the same as a normal. You want to touch down about 65 knots. Um, you can come in at 60 knots if you want, especially with the shorter grass strip that we're dealing with, but uh, which is probably what I'm going to try to do here. So let's give it our best shot. I'm going to go ahead and slow our, go ahead and level off right here. All right. I am kind of far away from that grass strip, so kind of bring myself back into the traffic pattern a little bit. All right, gonna go ahead and start our descending descent. So I'll bring that power back. Flaps to 10. Flaps 10. Pitch for 80 knots. All right, make that base turn. There's base. Yeah, we're pretty far out, so I'm going to uh, slow my, introduce a little extra power here to slow my descent. Yep, there's the grass strip. All right. Final's clear. Flaps 20. Okay, remember, most important part of this is going to be the soft nature of the uh, the landing. We want to protect the gear. We don't want to come in too hard. This isn't asphalt. This isn't concrete. This is a grass surface. Go ahead and start slowing the aircraft down further by pulling the power out just a little bit. Keep that nose up. Gonna have a lot of airspeed to kill off here. So I'm gonna float just a little more than I want to. But that's all right, 68 knots right here. Flaps are down, here we go. Power to idle. And then just keep that nose elevated. Protect the nose gear, protect the nose gear. Keeping that, keeping the back pressure on the yoke, protecting that nose. See that if I come out here, it's almost like we're doing a wheelie. Not quite, but almost. 
protecting that nose gear until the eight, till the elevator can't support it anymore. Now, as we approach the end of the grass strip, we'll start to enter, introduce some braking. But at all times, is that nose gear going to be protected? Now, I don't know if this is a road or a taxiway or what, but you just completed, if you followed along with me there, you just completed your first soft field landing. Congratulations. Soft field landing and takeoff are pretty fun in real life uh, on a normal surface. I've never done a real soft field landing or takeoff. So now I want to take us to an interesting location and do it um, kind of do it in a more practical sense. So we're going to go to the mountains where it's going to be a challenge and everything, every bit of space is going to matter. All right, we're here at Johnson Creek 3 Uniform 2. This is a short runway. Uh, I don't know the distance on this. I think it's 2,800, 3,000 feet. So it's not really short. It's plenty for a Cessna. Uh, but at the end of the runway, we have uh, quite a bit of trees. But quite a few trees out there. And you can see we're in the middle of a valley. So it's very important that we practice exactly what we just did. Um, the soft field na nature of it. And also pitching for 62 to make sure we get that best rate of climb. Uh, which... I think at this altitude it's actually going to be slightly slower than 62 knots because we're at 5,000 feet essentially. So uh, the aircraft is already configured for uh, departure at this altitude thanks to the starting on the runway feature that this game you know puts you in a takeoff configuration. Um, if you didn't know what mixture to set your aircraft, you would just set your power to about 2,000 RPM, adjust the mixture for the peak RPM, and then use that for takeoff. But we're already set. So again, flaps are set to 10. We're going to practice exactly what we just did. Full power, all right. Back pressure on the yoke. All right, engine instruments are in the green. Airspeed's coming alive. Airspeed's alive. Remember, we're gonna get on out into ground effect early. Look at this beautiful valley. It's gonna come off the ground. All right, there we've got airborne way too early, so we want to remain in ground effect. There we are, staying ground effect. 62 knots, you see those trees approaching. This altitude, you're probably gonna want 60 knots, uh, 60 knots flat. And you can see just how much room we have to spare. It's not a whole lot, so we're gonna continue to climb and aim for the valley here. Our takeoff performance is degraded because of the fact that we are at a higher density altitude, or we're at a higher altitude period, and with that is a higher density altitude. So once we've gotten in the valley here, we're gonna get over, pitch over, get some good airspeed to retract our flaps. Make those flaps retract. Let that airspeed build and climb off into the valley. So, so there you guys have it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you're new and you like the content, hey, hit that like and subscribe button. Support a growing channel. Uh, happy to keep making videos for you guys. Um, the short field take, you know, doing this stuff in real life is still a kind of a challenge for me. Obviously, I've never flown in a valley like this. Uh, this is beautiful, though. It'd be kind of neat to do one day. So those are kind of the techniques that you're going to want to use to get in and out of very short airfields or... Uh, airfields that aren't quite built on uh, concrete or asphalt so leave a comment below let me know what you guys like to see going forward and uh, hey now that you guys have the tools get out there practice go make mistakes go have fun let me know how it goes for you guys in the comments below and I'll see you guys in the next one